Hello, I'm hematologist oncologist Dr. Tony Talibi, and this lecture pertains to the myelodysplastic syndrome chapter of Hematology and Transfusion Medicine Board Review Made Simple. 71 year old man presenting with fatigue and shortness of breath. Patient is pancytopenic with hemoglobin 7, WBC 2000 with 40% neutrophils, no blasts, and a platelet count of 80,000. Normal folate B12 TSH and ferritin. No history of ETOH abuse, normal copper, negative Coombs test, negative HIV, and hepatitis panel. No new medicines initiated. Peripheral smell revealing teardrop RBCs and hypolobulated neutrophils, pseudo peltrate white cells. Bone marrow biopsy revealing dysplastic erythrocytes and reduced granulocytes. Reduced megakaryocytes with 5% blasts. Cytogenetic testing reveals 46XY with deletion of chromosome 7. MDS is an acquired clonal disorder characterized by ineffective hematopoiesis, which results in peripheral blood cytopenias. Defective clonal expansion or abnormal bone marrow microenvironment may lead to MDS. It has a high risk of progression to AML. It may be caused by radiation or chemotherapy, such as topoise hormones 2 inhibitors or alkylating agents. Usually the bone marrow is hypercellular due to increased apoptosis of normal cells, but can be hypocellular 10% of the time, possible antecedent autoimmune destruction. Could have been present before. The 5Q- syndrome. Thrombocytosis and macrocytic anemia can occur in association with a specific cytogenetic abnormality. The interstitial deletion of long arm of chromosome 5 or so-called the 5Q- syndrome, which is discussed later. The 3Q21Q26 syndrome, this trilogy of dysplasia, including dysmegakaryocytopoiesis presenting as MDS, AML, or a normal or increased platelet count, and a poor response to treatments have been described in patients with translocations involving chromosome 3. The WHO classification, First, refractory anemia. In the peripheral blood, you'll see anemia with no blasts. In the bone marrow, you'll see erythroid dysplasia only and less than 5% blasts. Next, refractory anemia with ring blasts. Peripheral blood, anemia with no blasts. Bone marrow, erythroid dysplasia only, less than 5% blasts, and more than 15% ring blasts. Next, refractory anemia with multi-lineage dysplasia. In the peripheral blood, you'll see cytopenias, biopancytopenia, and no blasts. In the bone marrow, dysplasia of more than 10% of cells. Still less than 5% blasts in the marrow. Next, refractory anemia with multilinear dysplasia and ring blasts. Peripheral blood, you'll see cytopenias, biopancytopenia, no blasts. Bone marrow, dysplasia more than 10%, less than 5% blasts, and more than 15% ring blasts. Next, RAEB1, refractory anemia with excess plasma transformation 1. You'll see cytopenias in the peripheral blood, and we'll start to see blasts, at least less than 5% blasts in the peripheral blood. In the bone marrow, you'll see uni or multilinear dysplasia and between 5 and 9% blasts. Next, RAEB2. Peripheral blood, cytopenias, now 5 to 19% blasts. Bone marrow, uni or multilinear dysplasia, now between 10 and 19% blasts. And as you know, more than 20% blasts is considered AML. Next, MDS unclassified. Peripheral blood, you'll see cytopenias. Bone marrow, unilinear dysplasia in granulocytes or megakaryocytes with less than 5% blasts. And last, there's an MDS associated deletion 5Q, in which in the peripheral blood, you'll see macrocytic anemia and thrombocytosis. In the bone marrow, you'll see normal increased megakaryocytes, less than 5% blasts. The International Prognostic Scoring System, the IPSS, is very important. <clears throat> Patients assigned a certain number of points based on the marrow blast percentage, the karyotype, and the cytopenias. In terms of the cytogenetics, the good cytogenetics are considered either normal cytogenetics, Y deletion, deletion 5Q, or deletion 20Q. Poor are considered complex, more than three abnormalities, or chromosome 7. Intermediate is between the two. As you can see, you're assigned a certain number of points. For instance, if you have 
11 to 20 percent less in the marrow, you're assigned one point five point. If you have poor cytogenetics, you're assigned one point. As far as cytopenias, zero to one, zero point, two to three point five point. Now adding these points, you're derived, you derive at a median survival. So if the scoring value is zero, low, median survival is 68 months. That's intermediate one between 0.5 and 1 point, 42 months. Intermediate two is between 1.5 and 2 points, 14 months. If it's high, more than 2.5, 5 months. Remember, 20% blast in the marrow is considered AML. Most patients succumb to infection due to neutropenia prior to progression to AML, however. And congenital sideroblastic anemia is due to mutation in the ALAS2 that does not progress to AML. Important, remember 5 key minus syndrome, special subtype of MDS in which the patient presents with macrocytic anemia and thrombocytosis only, and less than 5% blast in the marrow. It's important since transfusion independence may be achieved with lenalidomide. Also, the TET2 mutation seen in 25% of MDS cases, mostly in chromosome 5 or 7 deletion, may predict higher response rates to demethylating agents. Remember, hypocellular MDS, difficult to differentiate from aplastic anemia. It may respond to immunosuppression, especially if HLA-DR15 positive. Treatment. Supportive care with blood and platelet transfusions and iron chelation once a ferritin is more than 1,000. Growth factor support. Combination of GCSF and erythropoietin stimulating agents may be better than one alone. Patients with erythropoietin levels more than 500 rarely respond. GCSF is not associated with AML progression, but pectal grasping may cause splenic rupture in MDS patients. Thrombopoietin agonists undergoing clinical trials. Thalidomide, but remember it has side effect profile including constipation, neuropathy, and thrombosis. Lenalidomide and 5 key minus syndrome. Immunosuppressive therapy and hypocellular MDS ATG plus cycles foreign. Remember that HLA DR15 positivity predicts response to immunosuppression. And hypomethylating agents. Azacitidine has shown to improve survival in high risk MDS patients, the IPSS2. May see delayed response, so do not give up on the hypomethylating treatment after only one or two cycles. An allogeneic stem cell transplant may be curative in younger, healthier patients. Remember to exclude Fanconi's anemia in children since their potential donating sibling may also have the clonal disorder. This concludes the mild dysplastic syndrome chapter. Thank you.